All right, everybody, Jake here. Uh, just going to show you the power plant my grandfather uh, helped build in 1908. He was the director of electrical engineering here at the Koreshin Unity, uh, which is now the Koreshin State Historic Site. Um, this piece of property has got a lot of history for my family and a lot of people's families because this was the first community in the world that had full electric power to all buildings, dwellings, everything in the in the whole uh, you know, community. And my grandfather helped build this. He was really responsible for a lot of the wiring and things like that that happened outside of the power plant. Uh, a, a fellow from Holland actually built the mechanical pieces of this. And I'm sure my grandfather probably helped him, but he got all the credit for the mechanical stuff. My grandfather gets the credit for all the wiring on the rest of the community. Um, but long story short, this is an air compressor. It provides air for these two uh, accumulators here. Air dumps from these into a starter uh, that you see over there. That turns the big flywheel, starts things in motion, and then there's a glow plug up top. The glow plug ignites it, and our big diesel engine fires to life. And originally, this was a steam engine back in the day, but in the 40s, it was upgraded to a diesel, and they're still trying to locate the steam engine. It's somewhere around, but nobody knows where. So what's unique here is they were very thrifty, and water from here would go into the engine. So this is a water reservoir. It's a coolant tank, if you will. We go up into the cylinder heads and the cylinders go out through that pipe you see there, and it would go over to a cooling tower that is outside. Let me see if I can zoom in on that. So the cooling tower is out there, and the water comes in the top of the cooling tower, passes over the, the coolant pathways, if you will, cools it, and then they would use that for a warm shower. Again, 1908. So um, this is the generator. There's usually a big a leather belt that connects the generator up to this idler, and then from the idler up to the uh, main flywheel there on the engine. So there's a couple of other things in here. Uh, this generator was one that they had to provide power locally inside the generator building. Uh, so it didn't, you know, of course, they were making low voltage here just to run lights and whatever. And this was like the dead man switch that you would use to electrify the rest of the unity over here. So um, this is a 75 horsepower, believe it or not, Fairbanks Morse diesel engine. So, yeah, a 75 horsepower engine that weighs <laughs> no telling how many thousands of pounds uh, in 1925. Um, here's piston rings out of this engine to give you an idea. I'm going to stick my hand over here. That's a, a real piston ring for you, right? Um, these are just some extra tubes and things like that that were here as part of the original um, setup. And uh, it was cool to see this run. I got to see it last time I was down here. So then outside here, um, there's a couple more buildings. There's a, a, a machine shop over here, and there's a blacksmith shop. Uh, as well. This is what it looked like back in the day when it was operating uh, constantly. So you can see it was driven by this large belt here, and then it drove a small belt that would run that local generator that's still set in there. I don't think it works anymore. Um, so, but they say 80 horsepower diesel engine here, 75 on the other screen. So I'm not sure which one's right. And that's the machine shop over there. And then over here is a blacksmith shop. So just wanted to show everybody what this is all about. Again, 1908, this is, was built, and uh, it still operates today. So my grandfather went on to start Raby Electrical uh, and Mechanical Shop here in Fort Myers. That's where we're at, just outside Fort Myers, Florida.